This news update is brought to you by AgroFest 2014, encouraging entrepreneurship through innovative agriculture. Box offices, the Barbados Agricultural Society, Cave Shepherd Broad Street, all Supercenter stores, the Costa Manning stores, Fontabel, Warren, Spearhead, and Sheraton. Clear Vision Optical, 11 Pine Road, Belleville in St. Michael. Roberts Manufacturing Feed Store, Laura Estate in St. George. Waterworld Pet Shop, Jordan's Complex, Spikestown in St. Peter. Barbados' biggest exhibition and getting bigger. Be there. This is the Noon Barbados Today update for Thursday, February 20th, 2014. I'm Don Paris. An international economist is suggesting that Barbados' economy can make an about turn through tourism, but Dr. Fred Bergson, founder and director emeritus of the Washington-based Peterson Institute, says Barbados needs to turn more of its attention to markets like China to get that done. The enormous opportunity for Barbados and other small island economies in the Caribbean. Small is beautiful. The fact that you are small means as I tried to illustrate in the China case, that if you've got only a very tiny share of such a huge market, it could be a game changer for your whole time. Dr. Bergson cautioned government that trying to diversify the economy too much could actually do more harm than good. Small economies, whether in the Caribbean or elsewhere, really do have to focus, I think, on a relatively small number of economic regions. If you try to diversify across your economy too widely and try to pursue too many ventures of different industrial sorts, you really run a risk of doing nothing well. Now that may sound like harsh medicine. Dr. Bergston's other advice to government includes limiting spending and providing a framework to encourage the private sector to resume investing. He was speaking last night at the Grand Sal of the Central Bank at the first Caribbean Economic Forum, which was broadcast across the region. And speaking of the importance of tourism, the minister responsible for that portfolio, Richard Seeley, is giving kudos to the organizers of the now 10-year-old Barbados Reggae Festival. He says the contribution of that event to the sector should not be underestimated. One of the other important things about this event, too, is that even from the early stages, I think that Al and Freddie understood that they are offering a product to the world. And when I say the world, I mean literally the world. They're not only interested in our major source markets, United Kingdom, US, Canada, and the rest of the Caribbean. They go into Asia, into Europe, into Latin America, and look for business. And I firmly believe that if tourism is to continue to be our major engine of economic growth, we have to do that. Celio is speaking at last night's official launch of the event, which comes off April 21st to 27th. Political scientist Professor Neville Duncan is suggesting that neither the ruling Democratic Labour Party nor the opposition Barbados Labour Party has what it takes to lead the country out of its economic troubles, at least not with the ideas they've already put on the table. Professor Duncan tells Barbados Today the decision to lay off 3,000 public sector workers itself shows a lack of imagination. The idea of laying off so many workers in the public sector is that the government seems committed to accepting that the IMF route is the only route. In other words, um, it hasn't even sought um, to find other financial support for the Barbadian economy, say with China or you know, some other country that might be interested in, in, in challenging the U.S. dominance in the global economy to try and help it through um, the present situation. So that I think both parties seem quite lacking now in imaginative alternatives that people can give credibility to and want to support. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I'm Red Plastic Bike. Anyone who knows me knows I don't like coal.
sunshine rains in my country. I love it. Trinidad and Tobago is to give its highest national award to Slinger Francisco. You might know him better as the Mighty Sparrow. Prime Minister Kamler Prasad Besesser, who made the announcement that the Order of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago will be bestowed on the Calypsonian, says the state will also cover the medical expenses Sparrow incurred during his recent illness. He suffered a stroke and spent three months in a New York hospital, but now he's back home for carnival. We go to central Kiev in the Ukraine now, where more than 20 people have died in fresh fighting that shattered a truce declared just hours earlier by President Viktor Yanukovych. The latest bout of street violence began when protesters attacked police lines and set fires outside Parliament, accusing the president of ignoring their demands to enact constitutional reforms that would limit the president's power. That's been the noon update. Join us again at 6 this evening. Until then, log on to www.barbadistoday.bb. Subscribe to our e-paper and like us on Facebook to get more news and sports. I'm Don Paris. The Business Minute is up next. The Business Minute is brought to you by... To my people out there working hard to expand your horizons, chasing a flawless dream. Keep your eyes on the prize and we don't look back. It's forward thinking on to the new stuff. It's time to lay bricks on the foundation of your future. Get set for Signia to be sure. The world will be yours. Take you to exceptional, incredible new heights. And get set for Signia. Signia, quality solutions for your financial needs. This is the Barbados Today Business Minute for Thursday, February 20th, 2014. I'm Vic Fernandes. A prominent hotelier is worried the temporary closure of Sandals Barbados will lead to a significant drop in visitor arrivals to the island. Sandals Resorts International recently announced that Sandals Barbados will be closed from April 1st for eight months to undergo a 65 million US dollar upgrade. But Adrian Loveridge says the closure of the Christchurch property could lead to a decline in valuable airline seats and harm the tourist product. Royal Bank of Canada won't be closing any of its branches anytime soon. CEO for Caribbean Banking, Suresh Suku, and Trinidad and Tobago Managing Director Daryl White said in a joint statement that it has no such plan, though the bank is restructuring its operations. Barbadian manufacturers and service providers are being told to invest more time and effort into laying the groundwork for exporting to the region. Managing Director of CILC Action Coach Ian Blanchard says businesses should be more innovative, carry out careful planning, and deliver consistent products and service. And now for today's financial tip. Having money in savings for use for emergencies can really keep you out of trouble financially and help you sleep better at night. Also, if you get into the habit of saving money and treating it as a non-negotiable monthly expense, Pretty soon, you'll have more than just emergency money saved up. That was the Barbados Today Business Minute. I'm Vic Fernandes. To my people out there working hard to expand your horizons, chasing a flawless dream. Keep your eyes on the prize and we don't look back. It's forward thinking on to the new stuff. It's time to lay bricks on the foundation of your future. Get set. Signia, quality solutions for your financial needs.